I'm Lori Rogers. Um, I've been here 11 years doing kindergarten. And great age, we love being here. <laughs> and she came first grade, so I'm Yeah, so yeah, I taught first grade for nine years before I came here. Um, really, really enjoy kindergarten a lot. I'm Kelly Sykes. I've, um, I've been here a long time. <laughs> I have two children, one in second grade and then a junior in high school. So I've seen the, the scope of the school, so it's a second home to me for some time now. In kindergarten, one of the reasons we love kindergarten is the, the age that they are. And I think the beauty of this year, which I think is a beautiful bridge or marriage of the academic side and when they're learning to read um, and developing their reading skills to developing who they are as a person and a learner. So we really view it as a beautiful foundation year where they find out a lot about themselves. Um, having started with that, the social and emotional aspects of our curriculum is really our, our basic foundation because we spend the first good six to eight weeks and throughout the year really developing a sense of community, building relationships, um, and just developing that bond and connection with their hearts because once you connect there, then learning has no boundaries really. So our social emotional curriculum, we start the year with, or every day with responsive classroom where we have a morning meeting and we do some type of connecting activity. And then our curriculum for social emotional learning begins with a second step program and in it they learn the skills, how to self-regulate. Um, I brought a book, what it means to be present, how to really know what you're feeling and then what to do with those feelings. Labeling emotions so that they can better kind of articulate what's going on within them and understand what others are going through. Can I come to the kindergarten? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of adults would benefit. That's right, that's right. I didn't learn this stuff in kindergarten. Yeah. Um, I had to learn it on my own as an adult. So we uh, learn about feelings, how to articulate. Um, we develop perspective taking. We build empathy skills. Um, conflict resolution in peaceful ways. We do some with mindfulness. Um, I like to think kindergarten is a great year where we set them up. Not that every grade doesn't do this. Um, but we set them up with not just skills that they're going to need to know for a quiz or a test as I often see with my older daughter. These are like life skills, like how to be present with yourself, how to work with others, um, and engage in respectful ways. So these are some of my favorite, favorite books. We use a lot of literature, um, stories, and then as we learn about each other and ourselves. Um, along with the social emotional, I mean, the, one of the things I love about kindergarten is just being able to see the growth from the beginning of the year to the end of the year is just really, really tremendous. And we are very fortunate to be at a place. <laughs> Sorry, we need another third person. I know. Um, we're very fortunate to be here and at a place that really um, embraces us teaching um, what is developmentally appropriate at this level and. And we know that the play uh, play time is still so important, you know, in kindergarten. So we do have those two re recesses outside every day. We have the center time typically at the end of the day. The kids have free choice in getting to um, play in centers. Um, and there's lots of great learning that goes along with that as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is an emotional curriculum. Um, here is just a meeting how we did a, uh -huh. our morning meeting. We do act out different scenarios as we learn to take on the perspective of others and build some empathy. Lori also mentioned the play. We are one of the few kindergartners that still in our programs in the county that still offer that play center. Because no matter what we teach during the day, they will act it out and create that knowledge as their own in the way they play in the afternoon. No matter what we're studying, it comes out. No matter what's happening at home, we have any babies being born. You never, as they're processing information, they. Um, engage in it through play. Oh, sure. That'd be great. So we do language arts each day, and that includes a variety of things. Um, that will include, of course, phonics um, with letters and sounds. And no matter where your child is, whether your child comes in knowing all their letters and sounds, or and we don't necessarily expect them to know all sounds coming into kindergarten, um, but if that's something that we're really working on, um, you know, we differentiate. Um, to, to take each child where they are and to move along. So we'll do all kinds of things with language arts. Um, it might be 
making words with um, magnetic letter tiles. Um, here you can see at the top left corner, these kids are doing a puppet show. We have read The Little Red Hen, and they're acting out the puppet show. Um, when we read um, The Three Billy Goats Gruff, we'll sometimes go out to the playground bridge and, and reenact the story out there. Um, uh, below that, we do guided reading, so when, when kids are ready, um, that's one of the very exciting things about kindergarten, too, is that we'll start to read books with them. We will send those home each week. Um, you know, based on where your child is with reading. And so that is something else that's just really exciting to see for the growth from the beginning of the year to the end. Um, we have recently, we typically second semester start poetry folders. So each week um, we'll have a new poem in their poetry folder and it'll typically go along with something that we're studying. And then by the end of the year, they'll have lots of poems that they can go back and read through and they um, really enjoy getting, going back and reading those. Um, of course, lots of read-alouds, lots of shared reading, lots of writing, um, lots of encouraging them as they're writing, as they come in. Um, you know, we certainly don't expect kids to be writing words when they come into kindergarten, but we'll start just with drawing pictures. We have a writing journal. Maybe draw a picture of something you did this weekend. Um, starting to label some of those pictures. If it's just the beginning sound in that picture, that's awesome. And then we work to start to be able to spell words and, and again the growth is tremendous. And that's what I think I love the most in this piece is is watching their journey and how they interpret information and what we teach and what they bring. Um, so I love that journey of learning. And along with language arts we do a lot of um, organization as far as station, their station base, literacy station base. And so the children this year will learn a lot of independence. So we may have a phonics base station, some a piece of connection to literature, um, I'm slightly distracted. <laughs> a connection to the literature or the sound of the week. And depending on where you are, you'll we'll all be doing the letter D, but depending on where you are, you may be doing beginning sounds. We may be reading words that begin with D. We may be listening for D at the end of words. So depending on where you are, but everybody's going to be working on D. But within the stations at the different tables, some will have a teacher focus station and others will have a, maybe a parent volunteer or an independent station and the children learn to rotate and manage their time throughout. It's really great to see them develop that independence and self-management. I mean it's amazing what they can do at five and six years old um, and that better equips them to go forward. Can I ask a quick question? What's the purpose of the stations like what are you guys trying to do to get them all to be the, at the same level no or not at all the, what's not the at purpose all. of them it's an opportunity to work within a construct of time to reach as much of the language arts elements as we can so we have some fun opportunity for phonics fine motor a literature connection a reading group possibly so it's a rotation so you can get to work with smaller groups of children and they move around yeah. the most during that time. That's what I was going to say, a big thing, just being able to have those small groups. Yeah. So when we have, you know, the learning specialist at one table, assistant at one table, teacher at one table, or a parent at one table, to be able to work, you know, one to five or one to six ratio with the kids is really very helpful. And that doesn't happen every day. Some days um, we may do more whole group things. Some days it may be half groups. Um, it just depends on, on the day. It maximizes our time with each student. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And do any time we're talking, just we do lots and lots with fine motor, as I'm sure your child is doing in JK as well, but that continues to just take many, many hours of cutting and making things with Play-Doh and um, all kinds of different stuff that we'll do, whether um, putting little beads on, on lines or um, just have lots of fun activities. It helps their hand-eye hand coordination. Builds their core strength that helps them with writing. All the muscles you're going to use. So for math, we do lots of hands-on things. As you see, some pictures up here. Um, we have our 100 day coming up pretty soon, and I imagine JK they may do something special for 100 day as well. Um, but yeah, still we're, we're starting to get into addition and subtraction and some story problems. A lot of that is still with objects that we'll use. We're starting to draw pictures right now. Um, as we're working on some story problems, um, but lots, I mean, we'll do lots of graphing and fun things with shapes, um, and I'm sure your kids have probably done a lot with patterns. We'll, we'll extend that a little bit more. Um, today we already have, did you bring in your bears today? We're doing a little yes. bee, so we brought in bears, and so we're measuring um, the size of bears. We're doing some one-to-one -one 
correspondence or doing addition. I sorted them. They had to guess how I sorted their bears that they brought in. So it's a lot of hands on. Mm -hmm. We do lots of different things for social studies as well. Chinese New Year is coming up soon, um, and at each and I'll say each grade level takes a different country that they study. So kindergarten um, studies China, which is really great now that we have Mandarin here. Um, so they're able to being able to learn a lot about the Chinese culture, and they're learning right now um, in Mandarin about Chinese New Year. We will we will talk about that lots in our classroom too, um, starting next week. Up in the top corner, um, this was a student that was in my room, and Laura had one as well, of Native American descent. So anytime your family culturally celebrates something, we invite you to please share it with us so that we can learn about each other in that sense. And we add that to our social studies curriculum as well. Is China the country that's just decided to every year or does it change every year so will it be still China next year or possibly something we've had China okay. yeah and I don't we should know what the other grades do but I'm not sure what first grade, first, you know. uh, one grade does England um, help me with Australia, Australia. 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 yeah they yeah. 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 so once they've gone through the lower school they you know, got to learn quite a bit about the different countries we did finish one of our most exciting science um, projects, it's our animal habitat, where they work with their second grade reading buddies and they choose an animal they're interested in. They learn about its habitat, its diet, um, unique things about the species, and they work with their second grade reading buddies on this research and learn about it. And then they make you know, a little, little diorama like we used to do when we were little with book reports. They make its habitat and they write a little report on it. And they love doing that. We go to the pond each season, and we're planting flowers there. That, well, that's our animal habitat. And the other one in the top right-hand corner, um, we talk about helpful insects at the end of the year. And the most beautiful pictures come from this outdoor lab where they release butterflies, which are a helpful insect into the environment, and the children have all the ladybugs um, crawling all over them. So that's one of our labs. That's great fun at the end of the year. And sciences are, are one special where kids go um, in half groups for the entire year. So that's really great for us when we can have the half groups in the room too. Um, so we're kind of able to really work whether it's reading groups or other um, you know, phonics work or whatever it is to be able to work in even smaller groups then. We, for computer, we start half groups at the beginning of the year, but then it, it goes into whole group. So what do you do with ladybugs? I want to tell Lexi. Oh, helpful, and we study helpful insects, so like praying mantis and ladybugs, and so we release them into the garden okay. to help our, you know, our garden, our environment. And they have them crawling all over. I mean, it's if you've never heard a group of children giggle, <laughs> it's it's just beautiful sounding and looking as loud. Yeah, it's we learned about their life cycle. We'll go out and find the aphids on the, on the walls outside our <laughs> building and stuff like that too. We do go to uh, the computer lab, like we said, once a week. Um, they also have opportunities, um, and it depends on the week. So we have access to iPads that we share with early childhood. So your child has probably had some experience um, with iPads once in a while in JK, and we also will use those um, once in a while. So I, I sometimes use them once a week. It depends on the week. <laughs> um, so for me, I'll sometimes use them um, if it, with a new handwriting um, app that we might be doing or with phonics or reading or math and then I'll also that while my assistant is helping kids with that be able to pull some kids to do reading as well in those in that half group time are there maybe a couple of apps you use that we could start playing around with uh -huh. I think if handwriting is my handwriting without tears if you're going to do a handwriting app yeah. I would love for you to get a stylus so they can also work on pencil grip instead of just using their finger yeah. um, we have one called Letter School, I think. For that yes, school. yes. The kids, that's probably most popular. Kids it love is. the Letter School one. Yeah. But there's another one, um, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but it has the lion on it. Oh, um, probably, ABC Tracer? Yes. ABC Tracer. Yes, that's a good one, too. Um, okay. Yeah, there's lots of, I mean, there's a Teach Me Kindergarten app. There's so many, you know, there's so many good ones out there now. But we definitely say, Limit, limit the screen time though for sure. I mean, there's lots of great, as we know, educational tools out there. You have to be careful with technology technologies and that's to, to limit. Do you have a question? Yeah, are they going to learn writing cursive or is it uh, the print type of 
Just yeah, print. just print, print in kindergarten. I think in third grade, so they, right, okay. they learn. Okay. And we do start some of our languages. We have start your letters at the top for the capitals. And when we teach them the formation, we usually group them in the way that the letters are formed similarly. So um, capital E starts at the top, you frog jump up. P is also a frog jump letter. Those are for uppercase. And the lowercase we have with the magic C letters that all kind of start with a C. So we kind of group them as we teach the letters, and that helps them retain the formation. We usually take two parents um, for each of the field trips as a chaperone. There are some exceptions to that. The Nutcracker sometimes does the possibility for you to buy a separate ticket and just come as a guest to the show. Um, our assisted living, we go to Carolina Estates right here on Old Battleground. And the children, those that are in Suzuki, will play some Suzuki um, songs for them and then we'll sing to them as well. And that's one of our favorites. Last year we, so you're all welcome to that. we brought cards for the residents mm -hmm. as well and brought books that the kids had been reading to read to the residents, and they just absolutely loved it. Um, got some really sweet pictures from that too. Yeah, so <laughs> that was the what's, end. what's on your mind? What, what do you want to hear yeah. about that we maybe have not mentioned? Class size. We have 16. Mm -hmm. Both have 16 this year. And then our assistants are with us full time. Mm -hmm. as well. So what do you do with the with the uh, pre k Do you shuffle them up again? Or? The pre-K teachers, for, I mean, with each grade level, the teachers will get together with the learning specialist, with counselor, mm -hmm. Brittany. Um, it's a big process of really looking at um, learning groups. We want to make sure that kids are in learning groups with other kids. Um, looking, you know, at teachers, looking, we just look at a whole Social lot of dynamic. things. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Friendships. Oh, friendships, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's several weeks of working <laughs> together to make sure you know that we think we've got the best like, possible placement for the kids. And as a grade level, we, we are right across the hall from each other, so we'll frequent the playground too. So if they happen to not be with someone, all our field trips are together and our outside times are together. Yeah, so they'll definitely get to, if they're not in the same class with a good friend, they'll definitely still get to see that good friend a lot. I was just thinking I could show our schedule here too. Oh, and, and I, I forgot the little video too. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just pulled, this is just our Tuesday. So different days of the week are going to look different depending on when our specials are during the day. So like Kelly said, we always start with the morning meeting, which will, you know, include us greeting each other on the rug. Um, sometimes we'll share news, which is always very entertaining. <laughs> you want to have any news today? We get all kinds of things. Um, having our calendar time. Um, then, of course, like we talked about, language arts is always in the morning, first thing, after our morning meeting time, typically about an hour, typically from about 8.45 to 9.45. Then we always have snack after that. So if the weather is nice, we'll go outside. Um, we do a variety of things, as, as I'm sure your kids do right now. If it's, if it's raining outside, we may do some extra center time. We may do some little exercise <coughs> things together to get them moving. Um, so on Tuesdays is the day that we go to computer lab. So we'll, it depends, again, on the the day of the week. So sometimes we might have two specials back to back in the morning. Um, I have one special in the morning, one in the afternoon. Um, so on this day I have math after that. Um, lunch is always at 12 o'clock or something. <laughs> Has been for a number of years. Um, we usually go outside again, come back in. Beginning of the year, um, we do have a rest time. That's sometimes a question parents have. Um, so we just ask parents to send in a towel at the beginning of the year and the kids will just lay down on their towels. And it's not, I mean, the majority of our kids do not sleep. It's just us reading a story to them, just a little downtime, we'll see maybe to some music. Or have and if we ever have someone books. that does fall asleep, we will let you know, as it might impact your evening. Um, we don't let them sleep for too long. <laughs> yeah, and the rest time is not as long no. as it is in JK. So no. it's a lot of times 20 minutes, probably at the most, usually. I mean, that's around the time, it's usually 20 minutes, um, just because our schedule's usually busy. Um, show and tell. So we, we start the year with having a, a, your child will have a turn to be star of the day so we can kind of get to know your child and your family and all of that. And then after they do that, um, each child is assigned a certain day of the week. So your child's day of the week might be Monday and every Monday they can bring in an object for show and tell. And as the year goes on, we'll sometimes 
transition to something that they made that they could bring in rather than because some of them like to bring in toys, you know, every week, which is fine at the beginning of the year. And now that um, um, we've started in my class that they're sharing their journal pages, things that they've written, so we have an office too, and they get to share what they're writing and learn to notice things about each other's work and compliment each other. Um, so on Tuesday we have PE in the afternoon. We have PE three times a week. Uh, I'm not sure when it's in JK. Do the same. Okay. Yeah, and then pack up. Typically, centers is at the end of the day where the kids will get to choose whether it's the Home Living Center, Lego Center, Art Center, Play Doh, mm -hmm. like some similar things that they have in, in JK as well. And for our carpool, we, we still do have the K Express option. So if you have just a kindergartner or a kindergartner and younger, you can participate in the Express carpool that happens by the cottage. And then if you have an older, older sibling, you can come to the regular carpool. You want to tell about the video? Oh, sure. So I, I pulled um, my students out this week and I asked them what they loved about kindergarten. It's always fun to hear from them. Yeah. <laughs> and some like to talk a little more than others. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, for homework. Yeah. Um, how much can we spend? I usually um, don't send anything home during the week. Okay. Um, usually on the weekends, and they're reading folders. They have reading folders each week, and you can interject if you very slightly. If there's ever anything that they need to work on or a little have a little extra practice with, we'll let you know. That would be different than expected, but it's not um, a formal homework to get sent home here. You need to have it done. At a certain time. It's not like that at all. Mostly reading folders. Yeah, mm -hmm. I said mine Thursday typically instead of, I go Friday. Instead of Friday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, same thing. It's not, I mean, it might be like a little handwriting page, or it might mm -hmm. be one little math activity. Sometimes with our second step guidance lessons, we'll send home a little, it'll be a little letter about what we talked about. Here's a little follow up activity that, you know, asking your child questions and answering. Um, so again, it's not something where we're checking and saying, oh, you need to bring your homework back, but if We do make a big deal if they bring it back. <laughs> yeah. uh, mostly it's for communication, so you know what we're learning and studying, and if we're doing our reading program and we've used certain phrases or um, things to engage them with, so you know our dialogue and what we're talking about. It's more of a connecting piece. Back and forth. Okay, oh, oh. let's see if I can get it to go back. For some reason, it was really slow coming up, and then... Yes. I mean, I hear it. I'm going to see if I can start it again. <laughs> well, it's on your the problem. Oh, right there. Right there. We didn't unplug it. I'm trying to get back to the beginning before I start it. Joys of technology. has a cool name. I like going to the Nutcracker Ballet. Oh, no problem. I like when we have our single buddies. In kindergarten, we learn how to read and write sentences. I like to do fun math. You can do our projects in kindergarten. I, um, I 
I'm here to show you what it is like to be in kindergarten. The teachers are really kind, encouraging, and loving, and that's how we try to be too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> reading powers. We like our friends. We went to do the fire station, and we saw a spark. And we saw Sparky, and he was my best friend. We go outside to turn today. We can build an animal habitat, with, and you can build your animal out of clay and whatever, whatever type of clay you want to. You can even mix the covers. <laughs> <laughs> Reading buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the relationship that you have with other groups of people? I know these friends, um, they already have JK buddies, and I love that in kindergarten, senior buddies continue. In kindergarten, they'll get a, another senior buddy, so they'll kind of be used to the way it works, and they really love having their senior buddy, but there are a couple other relationships, and you touched on that one second grade piece. Yeah, the second grade reading buddy that we meet with about once a year. Um, once a month. Once a month, I'm sorry, <laughs> once a month. Yeah, once a month. Um, and it's great to watch them start. The second grade reading, reading buddies will read to them, and then they do different activities, learning activities throughout the year. And then by the end, you know, the kindergartners are reading to them and teaching them some things that they're learning. Mm -hmm. That's a really neat relationship. Mm -hmm. um, we also always, being a Biddy Bangles through 12th grade school, we have the opportunity for a lot of interaction. And we often have upper school students coming in um, to work with the younger ones, middle schoolers, in years past it helps with math once a week. So the older students really love coming in and having that connection. We'll continue doing family groups um, like your child is doing this year. So they will stay in the fam the same family group typically. Um, we'll have, you know, as new kids come in, we'll probably have a couple added to their family group. Um, but it's really neat to see see a child start at a young age with a family group and then be able to go through the lower school and really get to know um, the other little brothers and sisters who call them in their family groups. They get excited when they see each other in the hallway or on the playground. to know by end of the year in terms of writing, math, um, is it I expect it's not a clear like uh, kindergarten. Uh, for kindergarten, but I guess there are certain levels, certain things that they need to be able to achieve. So I was wondering what are those kind yeah. of... <laughs> we would hope to, at the end of the year that a child who has been exposed to the sight words um, throughout the year and we've and work with blending sounds together that they will be in a true um, beginning reader, which includes words you'll have to sound out, some word endings, um, being able to read sight words and text, and maybe even use the context clues when a picture is not able to help you decipher what the word is. So a true beginning reader is a hope. Not everyone meets that, and some are beyond that. So it, it really varies. So we look mostly for growth. a lot of manipulatives okay. for um, building concepts. We do have papers. We don't have a math workbook. Okay. Yeah, so you'll see, I mean, I always tell parents at the beginning of the year, you're not going to see as much like paper, pencil stuff for them mm -hmm. come home as you will the, the writing or language arts stuff. Um, there's still certainly things that will come home on paper. Um, but we are doing, you know, whether it's math games and partners, um, you know, again, a lot of manipulative stuff, um, building and making things. Um, and with the Seesaw digital portfolios, which hopefully all of you are connected on, that has been, I found that helpful just to be able to show parents a little bit more and know what we're doing in math because I know parents were sometimes curious, like, well, what are you guys doing? You can't always see it. So um, able to show a little bit more of that. Um, and sometimes we'll do math and we may be doing a, how does, come up or approach a certain story problem 
and we've talked about it, and the kids have shared numerous ways to solve the story problem, and we've really gotten some great mathematical thinking in, and the kids will say, when are we going to do math today? I'm like, well, we have. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, to them, it's just writing numbers on paper. That's math for them. And we're doing more about, uh, more of the abstract understanding, understanding 